So last time we looked at what an example load process may be about, about how a zone sees different components of the load and how that gets you from where you have a conditioned error to what it looks like at the set point. And that there's a total enthalpy associated with that load and how some of it's going to be sensible, latent, and in our case we had some reheat after a cooling process. So now we're going to look at what happens with some scenarios where loads are differing from their design and that can happen for a few reasons. So in this first scenario where we have peak conditions uh, a little bit less than design expectations, that can be because the expectations just weren't accurate, there was too much safety factor, or the assumptions made may have been valid, but there are there's less load from people, from activities, from equipment like lighting or plug loads, or the building could just have better insulative qualities than was expected. But in any case, we have here a scenario where we're having less loads and we're seeing quite a bit more reheat than we had before. So when the load isn't picking up, that uh, when the zone isn't providing that load, that means that you're cooling to a condition if you have a constant, say, coil discharge set point. You're cooling to a condition such that you're going to need more reheat because the zone isn't providing that, that load. The zone isn't doing any of its own reheat. So something like a reheat coil is going to just naturally take up more of that. And that's not a condition that, say, an occupant is going to notice or your O&M team. The HVAC system is doing its job, but it's using more reheat than, than may have been expected, at least for design conditions. So one, pop, pop, so one possible solution here, when we talk about things like an optimized coil discharge, that may be something like a, like a, a reset. And when we say reset, we mean a set point that varies based on the conditions that are needed. So if you could find some way to, to, to measure or have a proxy for when you need that design load, you have the design set point and then you have a, a reduced or, or eased set point for conditions where you're not seeing that much load. Or it could be if there was a safety factor applied or there's a change in the space that you make a permanent change to something like a discharge set point that's more in line with actual needs. So the main takeaway here is you can see in this case when we look at the different components is that we have a reduced reheat and when we track that with our change in enthalpy there's actually less of a load that would need to be supplied overall by our HVAC system. So another condition might be if we have actual needs way below what the what the design expectations were. So imagine that instead of an office we have a conference space and that design condition is with everybody sitting down, lights, laptops, projectors, uh, the, when you have that space, if it's operating on a schedule, so let's say you have an air handler supporting that space that's running 9 to 5, but it's only used half the time, well, imagine what that load is for that, for that other half, for that unoccupied half. It, it might look something like this, where you have a little bit of pickup from you know, fan heat and a, a little bit of lights, but if it's an interior space and there's no people or equipment to really provide that, that zone load, then you might just be doing reheat all day. You might be actually cooling and then reheating, which we call simultaneous heating and cooling. And there's some clues to this. We're going to get into this with the utility data analysis, but, but just since it pertains to, to loads here, one of the tricks that we have to try to determine these things up front, what the, what the drivers are, is we can do things like plot, refine energy data on something like, instead of a time series chart, this outside air temperature. So this is, a, this is actually one of those charts of a conference space where we're looking at daily therms, daily gas usage, versus daily outside air temperature. And you might expect a single plot line, right? You might expect that as it gets colder, you use more gas, more space heat is happening. But in this case, you might see that you have two trend lines. And it turns out what, what was happening here was that there was two patterns. There was one pattern where we were at the occupied state, and the people and the equipment were providing that zone load, and there was less reheat needed. And then that top trend was where there was really no or little occupancy, and that reheat was basically providing the zone load to keep the thermostat happy. So we'll get into more of that later, but 
just one thing to keep in mind is that when you see no or part load operations, those those can be a real major energy driver, and there's solutions for things like on-demand HVAC, where you have those really big swings from high load to no or low load. And they could involve scheduling a space, if you know the schedule, uh, relying on something like a like an override at the thermostat, a push button for folks to engage their HVAC. There's ways that you can take an occupancy sensor and incorporate that into your automation system. Or something like CO2 as a proxy and having that be an indication for what your load is if your load is predominantly people-based. So then another scenario we might have is where peak and average conditions really aren't having this problem and that they end up matching the, the design quite a bit. So what, what then? Is that, does that mean that we did great? Yeah, it means that the the designer and the design team did a great job matching what that expected lows was and, and it turns out that the actual conditions are seeing that but we still have options for what we might call optimization so we might want to consider what would happen if we went from the 72 degree Fahrenheit target that we've been dealing with at about 50 percent relative humidity what would happen if we were to raise that to something like 75 degrees maybe there's an organizational policy that requires that the all thermostats are set to 75. Well, what does that what does that look like on the site chart? So, that takes us still to to not quite 60% relative humidity, so still in a in a fairly comfortable zone. But we're able to to move that whole load process up and over in a way that that reheat component just just goes away. So it's important to think about the effects from a psychrometric standpoint of when we change set points and, and what that what that what that impact is going to be. So in, in this case, you might argue that it's a it's a low operational impact, but we're able to get rid of that simultaneous heating and cooling that may have been there by design, but with these types of augmented operations, we might be able to to really improve the the energy usage. So there's a number of HVAC load references. I put a couple here and I'm highlighting for our purposes ASHRAE Standard 55 for thermal comfort. And also if you can get a copy of the handbook Fundamentals from ASHRAE, uh, there's four handbooks and the Fundamentals is the first of four. They update every four years and there's some good references in there about how, to, how loads are sized and how they're handled by HVAC equipment. But for our purposes, we're gonna move on now to trying to understand how to use psychrometric equations now that we've looked at the site chart to not only plot processes on the site chart but actually get some numbers out of it. Use some psych equations to get some quantitative analysis.